This is the comedy of the week from BBC Radio Four. If you'd like to find out more about any of our comedy shows, please visit bbc.co.uk/radio4. But first, here's this week's comedy. Start stop by Jack Doherty. <laughs> now, 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 now. Deep breath. <laughs> Try and keep calm. You'll notice I'm keeping calm. I'm not being heartless. It's just that Alice, in common with a lot of women, does tend to overreact. You know, emotionally. This could very well turn out to be a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Philip's dead. <laughs> okay, I know what you're thinking. A death. Emotion is justified. But let's just hold our horses. This Philip could turn out to be a character in a soap. Or a pet, <laughs> Philip. Philip from Thirty Six. Big Philip. His heart attack at the golf course is so shocking. Shocking, yes, but let me tell you, not surprising. <laughs> big Philip really was big. He was a sort of man who got out of breath on an escalator. <laughs> oh, give me a hug! It's such terrible news. Well, certainly terrible news for Philip, but not necessarily so bad for me. <laughs> Alice hasn't been this physical for years. God, I love death. I wish someone could die every day. Maybe we should move Ukraine. If we lived in Ukraine, <laughs> no, if we lived in the Ukraine, I'd probably get this every day. David. Yes. Why are you squeezing my buttocks? <laughs> no, no, sorry. I was just comforting you. Oh, we need to look after Philip's wife. Oh, of course, we, we have to be there for her. He's a kind man. I mean, he genuinely cares. Sometimes it takes a shock to make you realise what you've got. I need to spend more time with David. Well, not actual physical numerical time. <laughs> Quality time, I mean. You know, spend more time with him when he's awake. And, and by time, I don't mean hours, obviously, but some good, solid. Quality minutes. Are you feeling better? Oh, much. Thank you. I'm over the worst.、Well, that's a shame. <laughs> oh, I think I preferred her upset. I, I might have to bring out the big guns. Of course, it's the kids I feel for. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh Philip! Come, come here, Philip. come here. Candy from a baby. <laughs> What's this? A dog. I can hear that. <laughs> But what's he doing in the house? It's ours. Ours? The dog? The dog is ours? Yes, he's our dog. Okay, I need to be careful here. Fiona knows that I don't like dogs. She knows that I don't want a dog. In fact, early in our romance, and she remember this, I joked that I would never, ever, ever leave her unless she got a dog. <laughs> So, in the grand chess game of marriage, this could be seen as a provocative, even aggressive move. But I can't overreact; otherwise, she'll just dig her heels in. You bought a freaking dog! <laughs> yes, and the adorable. He's a rescue dog. He was found abandoned in the car park at Lidl's. He was owned by someone who shopped at Lidl. <laughs> Class of a dog have we got here, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, but there weren't any abandoned at Waitrose. He's not even a puppy. We don't even get the cute phase. He's like adopting an adult. Well, I know you said you didn't want a dog, but you'll change your mind when you get to know Mr. Barker. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Barker? Did I just hear right? She just called him Mr. Barker. So that's the next ten years of my life sorted. I'm going to be standing in the park shouting, "Mr. Barker, <laughs> Mr. Barker, where are you?" <laughs> And I'm going to look like an early onset Alzheimer's victim <laughs> who's lost his carer. <laughs> Why have you done this? Because I've always wanted a dog, someone in the house who loves me. I love you. Well, not like Mr. Barker. <laughs> I can lick your face <laughs> all day, every day. 
if you just get rid of Mr. Bar. What? Now you've upset him. He doesn't speak English! <laughs> Don't listen to him, Mr. Barker. You come with me and I'll show you around your home. My home, Fiona! It's my home! Tell him, tell... Tell Mr. Bar. <laughs> my God, have you heard the news? No, what? Philip from 36 died. Heart attack. Oh, bummer. Is that all you've got to say? What did you expect me to say? Well, aren't you upset? Well, yes, of course, but I hardly knew the guy. <laughs> Spoke to him at a couple of parties, you know, we talked about Breaking Bad, but that was it. Yeah, but he was there, and suddenly he's gone. I know, but I'll find someone else to talk about Breaking Bad with. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. I only saw him yesterday. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. <laughs> This is just a big joke to you, isn't it? No, it's just... It wasn't unexpected. Listen, everyone, we all know somebody that's living on borrowed time, yeah? We've all got a friend who's a walking, talking Facebook memorial page. <laughs> well, Philip from 36 was our guy. He had lager for blood and lamb dansack for flesh. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before his heart had the good sense to attack him. It's still a shock. Oh, you're not crying, are you? A little? It's not a crime! I'm not saying it is, but we need to keep things in perspective. Come on, back me up here. This whole British crying thing's got totally out of control. People used to lose their whole family, then go to a musical in the evening. <laughs> now it's an emotional meltdown if your favourite gets voted off X Factor. I sometimes think you wouldn't cry if I died. <laughs> I should have answered that immediately. I realise that now. I mean, you hope that your spouse will cry when you die, yeah? I mean, that's not just me. That's surely entry level for a successful marriage. I just really hope Barney dies before me because I don't want him doing my eulogy. <laughs> oh, well, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> It. No, 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 the delay was... I, w I was imagining the shock and, and processing that. You know, you, sudden, you suddenly confronted me with my God, life without Kathy. What would that be like? You know, w would I stay here in this house with all its memories or, or would I move, you know? <laughs> Emigrate, maybe, you know, the US or Australia. Quite a climate and the size of the properties you can get there. In, in, in comparison... In comparison to here. Yeah, but first, you'd cry, yes? Oh, yes, first I'd cry. I don't want you to think that your reaction here is normal, by the way, Barney. Any right-minded person is shocked and upset by the death of a neighbour. So fat fills flop like a fish? <laughs> How are you feeling, Fiona? I couldn't give a monkeys. He tried to grope me at the summer fair last year. Glad to see the back of him. A pithy eulogy, Fiona. I don't know what's happened to everyone. Someone's died. Yes, someone else. That's the important bit. <laughs> There's a widow and orphans. And they're flying the flag at half-mast over the curry garden. Yes, but life goes on. <laughs> OK, uh, who's the lager? Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, no, put them down gently. <laughs> oh, you've woken him up. It's the slightest thing sets him up. Shush! Did Mr. Bugger have a good sleep? Okay, don't, no, 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 no. That's my trousers. No, leave them. Leave them. Oh, he likes you. Uh, Mr. Barker, sit. Don't sit. Don't speak to him like that. You'll traumatise him. He's only quiet because he's eating Barney. <laughs> he's playing with Barney. You don't mind, do you, Barney? Well, see, see, Barney doesn't mind. Would you please stop the petty arguing? A man has died. Oh, stop banging on about fat Phil, will you? <laughs> no, I won't. OK, so he had some faults, but we all do. And um, when someone dies, we should have the good grace to focus on the positive. We should be more respectful for his memory. OK, then. Let's go to Curry Garden. Yeah. <laughs> it's what he would have wanted, Kath. <laughs> Do you like the music? 
I've put a little grief mixtape together. <laughs> I, I googled funeral songs and bingo. I, it's a sort of, now that's what I call mourning, volume one. <laughs> I've got to keep Alice in the mood. When she gets back from the shops, she'll get upset and then I'll comfort her. I may even comfort her on the kitchen table. <laughs> I haven't done that before. Oh. Hi, David. Oh, that's nice music. Yes, I find it very comforting. Uh, come and sit down, have a glass of wine. No, I'm going to cook some meals for Phil's wife, something to keep her and the kids going. Really? You sure? She's a big girl. You don't want to be porking her up at this time. She'll be back on the market soon enough. She'll need to get her figure back. Let's forget about cooking, relax, and listen to Whitney. No, it's just a few light Ottolenghi salads. Now, you slice the fennel and I'll sweat the aubergine. By the way, everyone, I'm not an idiot. I've worked out my husband has an ulterior motive here. Like most men, he has an eye on the main chance. When I came round from having my tonsils out, he was in bed beside me. <laughs> Claimed he was tired and just needed a lie down, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> so he has previous. I just need to keep him occupied for as long as possible until the danger passes. I'm off to the shops, David. I forgot the saffron. Could you toast those pine kernels? Oh, and they need to be done individually. <laughs> Do you want to... Oh, no, 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 down, Mr Barker, down! Oh, you really are his favourite, Barney. No, 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 that's my groin. No, don't, don't, not my, not my groin. Get off me! <laughs> Barney, be gentle with him. Oh, look, I can see this is a bad time. Forget about it, Evan. No, no, what are you going? No, 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 I'll come with you. Oh, you can't. It's time for Mr Barker's training. I'll cash you there, Evan. No, please don't leave me. Oh, come on, Evan. Look, after training, it's grooming. And then you need to finish building his kennel. What's happened? Yesterday, I, I, I could do as I pleased. Now, I'm enslaved. <laughs> well, I don't need to tell you where I was expecting to be on the comforting scale by now. And in about three seconds, I was fully expecting to be bringing my comforting to an enthusiastic conclusion. <laughs> Alice, hi, how are you doing? Oh, terrible. What's happened? Philip. Oh, yes, Philip. Oh, God, yeah, shocking. One minute you're golfing, the next, wow. I'm just buying some saffron. I'm cooking for his wife and kids. <gasps> oh, sorry, it's so stupid of me. Every time I think about it, it sets me off. No, 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 don't apologise, you know. God knows we've all shed some tears. <laughs> oh, it's so so good that men aren't scared of crying anymore. Yes, you're right. It, it, it's so liberating. It's silly, I know, but I find it quite attractive. Well, we can work with this, certainly. <laughs> <sighs> oh, thank you, Gaza, and your big blubbing baby face. You <laughs> made it acceptable to cry, and the rest of us are still reaping the benefits. Oh, you should see her. Grief really suits her. She looks fabulous. I mean, she looks fabulous ordinarily, but... Doubly so at the moment. She's got that Scottish widow's look. You remember that advert? Mournful, but still very sexy. <laughs> Austere, but with the promise of black underwear. <laughs> Bet Alice is wearing melancholic underwear at the moment. I'd love to know. 
maybe I could slip it into the conversation. I could say it's always a sad day when you have to get out the black boxers and she'll say, oh, you do that too? Yes, I've got on my black agent provocateur morning pants. Do you want to see them? There's a travel lodge just across the road. Are you going to the funeral? Oh, that's brought things crashing back to reality. Yes, I, 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 I want to pay my last respects to Phil. Well, I'd better get going. I want to take the food round later. OK, sure, yeah. About what time? Seven-ish. On your own or with David? I'm not sure. OK, so you might be with David, you might not. That's right. OK, bye. Was that a little heavy-handed? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm cooking. Going to make some food for Philip's family. Oh, here we go. It's the great British grief-off. <laughs> Not you as well. As well as who? Alice. I've just met her buying ingredients. What was she buying? Saffron. What do you think she needs saffron for? Sounds like she's going exotic. I'm only making shepherd's pie. Oh, she's going to outdo me. I'm not having that bitch out mourning me. <laughs> I knew Philip from 36 much better than she ever did. She only moved into the area last year. I played at a charity cricket match with Big Phil. If anyone deserves praise and recognition for her, is there anything I can do to help food? Then it's me, not her, and her saffron-infused whatever the hell it is. Did she say what she was making with the saffron? No idea. Right, right, well, I'm going to make a tartar tan with nutmeg and cinnamon and three types of apple. I'm going to fight fire with fire. <laughs> OK. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? Uh, yes, yes. You could write our condolences. The card's on the table. Wish I hadn't asked that. Anything but that. I hate writing condolences. I'll have to be heartfelt and throw in some personal memory. So sorry to hear about your loss. I shall very much miss chatting about Breaking Bad with Philip. I, I mean, that's just rubbish. Oh, no, wait a minute. OK. I've done it. The fact he was playing golf, that was my way in. Oh, no, no, that was just a story they put out to save face. What, he wasn't at the golf course? Well, he was at the golf course, but he died on the toilet. Oh. <laughs> well, that's ruined it. What have you written? So sorry to hear about your loss. At least we can all take comfort in knowing that Philip died doing something he loved. <laughs> seem very pleased with the food. I'm glad we did that. You didn't find it too upsetting? No, I'm fine. Well, you look quite upset. Maybe we should get back and have a lie down. <laughs> oh, hello, you two. Oh, hello. We've just been dropping off some food for Phil's wife. Oh, that's what we're doing. Yes, Alice made a lovely aubergine salad with pomegranates, pine nuts, basil and a saffron yoghurt. What have you got there? Shepherd's pie. <laughs> it was Philip's favourite. And I always think when you're grieving, you want some simple, honest comfort food. <laughs> and also, I've got a ta ta ta. Oh, if they have room for it after Alice's lemon syllabub with a raspberry jus. <laughs> Would you like to see the ta ta ta? Um, yes, if you want. Right, madam. Feast your eyes on my pastry angels. They've got veined wings. Veined wings! Do you know how long that takes? <laughs> Oh, that's very pretty. Are the angels from a mould? Of course they're not from a mould! They're handmade! <laughs> sorry, sorry. So we're all a little bit upset. Yeah, yeah, I've been in bits. Yeah, me too. I've taken this very hard. What? You've hardly batted an eye. No, that's not true. I, I, I think I was, I was just in denial. You know, it's the five stages of grief and, and now I'm on acceptance. Anger comes after denial. Yeah, not everyone has them in the same order, Cathy. <laughs> David's been asked to do a reading. Yeah, yes, I'm going to... <coughs> Excuse me. Well, <coughs> yeah, but it's the least I can do. Just to let you know, Alice held his arm there for a moment. It was almost affectionate. This is a worrying development. Be awful if this death brought them closer together. The reading. He'll be up there in the full glare of the grief light. I'll be at the back of the cheap seats. Alice will be at the front in her black morning knickers. <laughs> I mean, she'll, she'll have clothes on as well, but you know what I mean. And then, <laughs> after the funeral, it'll all be carpe diem and sex, life-affirming sex. You idiot, Philip, we all warned you. Stub it out and stop with the curries. Have a salad. But oh no, he knew best. Why did Philip have to die? The stupid, fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the reading, well, that's nice, David. Is that ever? I think it is. He's going very fast. Oh, I can't stop. I'm going for the war. Where are the other headphones? I don't know. Okay. You'll just...
just have to tell me what's happening. Okay. Phil Mitchell's coming, and he said, You didn't never love me, Sally. <laughs> Why don't we put the subtitles on? Well, because Mr. Barker had the remote. <laughs> we can't go on like this. Oh, and now Phil said, I'll kill him. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, just call the kids in for dinner. All right, so what's for dinner anyway? Cornflakes. <laughs> Cornflakes? I thought we were having chops. Mr. Barker at them. <laughs> <clears throat> OK, tell me what you think, darling. It's a no... What? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Are you all right? Yes, I've just got a throg in my throat. <laughs> I think you should maybe see the doctor. Oh, I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> so he's been banned from the training class and stupidest dog he'd ever encountered, the trainer said. They can live into the 20s. I'll be 65. It could outlive me. This, this could be a life sentence. Come on, it could get better. He seems quite calm now. It's the first time he hasn't attacked me. It's only because I've drugged him. <laughs> What's he on? A crushed Valium and two of those uh, you know, the whiskey miniatures you got me for Christmas. Well, there you go. That's your answer. Just keep him sedated. You know how much that's going to cost. He's got a taste for malt now. <laughs> Won't touch a blend. <laughs> Same again? Yeah, go on. And a double Lafroig for Mr. Barker. <coughs> it's laryngitis, it's cut and dried. But I want to do the eulogy. <coughs> it's what he would have wanted. You can't, David, you know you can't. It's very sweet that you're so desperate to honour Philip in this way, but someone else will have to do it. Oh, yeah, hi there. How are you? Not so good. Laryngitis. My voice has gone completely. Oh, well, that is a shame, everyone, isn't it? I might just drop my voice an octave just to rub it in. Oh, well, I'm very sorry to hear that. <laughs> Looks like I won't be able to do the reading. Oh, dear, no, I know how much you were looking forward to it as well. <laughs> oh, Barney, you could do it. You have a lovely speaking voice. Of course, I'm happy to help. Can we talk about this at home, Alice? Just let me know. <laughs> oh, yes, the so profundo to the rescue. I'm going to pull out all the stops. Alice is going to love it. I'm going to grieve her all the way into the sack. Oh, hello, Cathy. Have you been dropping off more food? No, I've just been helping around the house, doing the laundry, hoovering. I think she appreciated it. You? Oh, I'm staying over tonight. She asked me to. <laughs> I was in the lead. I was about to breast the tape and then my knees buckled and the young athlete with the long legs and the obviously dyed blonde hair streaked past me, the cow. I'll see you at the funeral. Stay strong. And you. Oh, and thank Barney for agreeing to do the reading. Barney's doing the reading? Yes. Didn't he tell you? N no. No, he, he didn't. Yes, I'm doing the reading. Is that so strange? Two days ago, you didn't give a monkeys, but now Alice has asked you... Oh, it's nothing to do with that. A good man has died. Maybe a great man. And he deserves our respect. He deserves a dignified farewell. Does he? Yes, he does. What's his surname? <laughs> his surname? Yes. What's this great man's surname? Is it... From 36? <laughs> Fiona, I'm at the end of me tether. Will you please get him to be quiet the middle of the night? I'll bring him up. He can sleep with us. <laughs> and so the coup is complete. A bloodless coup, but a coup nonetheless. The king is dead. Long live King Barker. Oh, there you go, Mr Barker. Just snuggle in there. There you go, Evan. He's nice and quiet now. He's nice and quiet now because he's licking my buttocks. <laughs> you don't mind, Mr Barker, finishing your bacon, do you? No, no, that's OK. Well, if you just finish up, I'll take him for a walk. No, no, no. No, it's OK. I'll take him for a walk. Yeah, I'll give him a good run on the hill. Yeah, I'll see you at the funeral. There are moments in everyone's life when profound decisions are taken. Lines are crossed and there's no turning back. Like when Michael Corleone decides to kill Fredo. Well, for me and Mr. Barker, that moment has arrived. 
Now, come on, Mr. Varker, come on. Come on, look at the big stick. Go on, I'll throw it and you take it. There you go. There we go. I'll see you in hell, Mr. Barker! <laughs> Barney, why is Evan supporting Fiona? I don't know. She looks like she's going to collapse. Fiona, are you okay? Why? Why did it happen? Why did you have to die? Don't worry, Kathy. She'll be... She'll be fine. She'll get over it. I can't compete with that. <laughs> I thought she didn't give a toss. This competition was between me and Alice. We've been gazumped. It's the Grief Olympics and I demand a drugs test. I'm the one who's upset. I'm the one who cares. I'm the nice one. Barney, I... I... So I think I'm okay. I think I can manage it. No, David. <laughs> Leave it to me. Okay. Dignified walk to the pulpit and scan the crowd. There's going to be some top-level mourning now. Just to let you know, Alice is looking at me intently. David's watching too. Okay, squeaky boss, this is how you do it. He shall not grow old. <laughs> oh no, that's too low. I sound like Paul Robeson. He shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. <laughs> Age <laughs> shall not weary him, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, Fiona, it's a miracle! He's not dead! <laughs> and in the morning we shall remember him. Now, Mr. Marcus, now, Mr. Marcus! There are moments in life that are so embarrassing that you know they will be deathbed cringes. Finding myself locked out of my hotel room naked, weeing myself in my maths exam, but in with a bullet that number one is the day I kicked Mr. Barker right into the side of Fat Phil's coffin. <laughs> okay, Fiona, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. I'm sorry to hear that. Mr. Barker died. Heart attack. Ah, oh, bummer. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Actually, no, it's not a bummer. This is tremendous news. Why is everyone great as soon as they're dead? Mr. Barker was a lunatic, unhinged, a borderline psycho. He ticked every box on the nutter spectrum, and the world is a demonstrably better place without him. But tell Fiona if there's anything I can do. Start Stop was written by Jack Doherty. It starred Fiona Allen, Sally Breton, Jack Doherty, Kerry Godleman, Charlie Hickson and John Thompson. The producer was Claire Jones. That was the Comedy of the Week from BBC Radio 4. You can hear more comedy at 11.30, 6.30 and 11pm every weekday on Radio 4 or any time you like through the BBC iPlayer. For more information, please go to bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 4. Ha 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 ha.